this is Joshua Beach, Omega Apex 128, back again for Josh's vlog. Now if you recall last time, it was a little bit of a different setting because I had just moved out on my own and we discussed the Odyssey 2. Well, as you can see, I'm now settled a little bit more in my apartment now. Uh, got a kind of a similar backdrop to the way I had in my old room. We got the posters up here on the wall, um, all the same posters and everything like that. But that's not what we're going to be discussing. We're going to be discussing exactly what I said we would at the end of my last video. The actual console itself, it's right up there. Yes, we're talking about Pong. That's right, Pong. Pong, you don't have to know video games. You, you know, even if you just hear the term and you're as classic as I am, the first thought that comes to, my, can, comes to your mind is... Well, it's probably going to be Atari or Nintendo, but for any other avid gamer, it's Pong. One word says it all. It defined a generation. This game is... It's hard to even... It's just Pong. There's no word to describe it other than that. The game itself came about... It was one of the most, if not the most, successful coin-op arcade games of its time. First appearing on the scene in 1973 in a big, massive wooden structure with a mounted TV in it. I mean, it was nuts. But it, like I said, turned out to be one of the most successful consoles of its time, as it later progressed. It was in 1975 that Sears and Atari came together to create their own Pong consoles under the Tell Games label. They started out with 50,000 units as their intention, but soon moved that up to 150,000, not just for the Christmas season, but for high demand as well and continued their successful line of all their Atari consoles throughout the mid-70s to early 80s, until, of course, the Atari 2600 came along. Well, as I pointed out in my last video up in the background, the box is right here. Here it is. I have the Wonder Wizard... I got that? Yeah, I have the Wonder Wizard Sharpshooter. Now, not only is this a you know, got Pong on it, as you normally would, which Pong consoles, of course, strangely enough, I'll call it tennis and stuff like that, you know, tennis, two lines and a square ball, I mean, that's Pong for you, but uh, this is the one that I have, it also came with the gun shooting game, funny thing about this shooting game is that um, it's not like any kind of modern shooting game um, that you would use with a light gun, the zapper, or the, uh, the Sega light gun phaser thing, um, no, actually, there's... <laughs> There's no real targets that appear on the screen other than a white square that bounces on the different edges of the screen. It just keeps on bouncing back and forth. There's no score or anything like that. The only way that you know if you hit it is when you pull that trigger. If you hear a beep come out of the console, you hit it. If you don't hear a beep, you missed. No indication. The screen doesn't flash. No nothing. Now that is primitive. It doesn't even keep score. So that's what we'll come on to next is the console itself console has two controllers hardwired into itself. It's just a very small square console here. Kind of one of the more interesting ones that I've seen. The video connector is also hardwired right into the system along with the video switch. So needless to say, you know, in goes the power adapter here. Here's the video switch over there. And then, if I could just go ahead and get this really quick. The controllers right here. The interesting uh them untangled here for a second. The interesting thing about the controllers actually is that um, they're very uh, analog sensitive. If I just, you know, it's very, very sensitive control, very fluid control. The red controller is actually the power button to the console, and the blue controller actually has a reset button. So, you know, if you get pissed off during a game, you're going to be able to easily, you know, either turn off the console or just reset it on the, whoever you're playing with. Pretty entertaining, as a matter of fact. But um, there's, let's see here, game, TV, where's the switch here? Oh, yeah, here we go. We have the um, four skill settings on the front here on the... On that little switch, on that little switch right there, there's all your skill settings, and then there's your different games. We have, um, of course, we have the pistol game that I already mentioned. We have tennis, just your standard pong, uh, keep track until you score 15 points. We have hockey, which is actually you know it's like tennis except you control two paddles for each player, four paddles total. You have handball, which is a two-player version. I wouldn't. Uh, I guess racquetball, handball, you know, that's kind of basically what it is. It's kind of weird the way it keeps score. Um, 
And and then finally, the last game is Jai Lai, or I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Apparently, it's, a, it's just a one-player version of handball. Um, the instruction manual says, and I quote, to enhance your video game skills against other opponents when it comes to games such as tennis and handball. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm not kidding. That's exactly what the manual says. So that just brings me to my last point of the gun itself. Now, obviously, you know what the uh, the NES Zapper gun looks like, how, how they made it orange and everything like that after a period of time. We have the Sega Phaser gun as well, which was just the black gun that looked really weird and definitely didn't work as well as the Zapper. Well, have you ever seen a gun like this? I kid you not. This is the gun that you use to play the game. If it wasn't for the wire attached to it yourself, would you guess that this is a toy? I mean, look at this thing. It looks like Dirty Harry's gun. It's like, I mean, are you serious? This is like, this is almost kind of like one of those things where you just want to, you know, if you were to cut the cable off of it, you'd walk up to someone and say, you know, I know what you're thinking. Did I just shoot five or six? So now you got to ask yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, yeah, I'm not even going to, you get the picture. This thing is, this thing, they never get away with this nowadays. But, I mean, it works just as well because if you see here, there's the lens on it. It works just as well as, like, it just detects if you're pointing it to that white square moving along the screen and everything like that. If you miss it, like I said, nothing happens. If you hit it, it beeps. So, there you go. Um, the only other thing that I would like to point out, of course, was that I had also mentioned that I built my own Pong console, and it's actually right here. Here we go, right there. See that? That is my own personal Pong console that I built right there. Um, you can pick one of these up on thinkgeek.com. It's actually pretty handy. You will need to know some soldering if you do um, happen to pick one of these up. It only costs you like 20 bucks or so. Um, but, you know, you got your audio video right there. Um, we got a potentiometer to adjust the... Um, the brightness of the game itself. Um, the only thing that you're going to notice on here is that um, the battery pack, I did have to go out and get a new battery pack for it because I made a personal modification to add an on off switch um, to the console itself. Uh, as you can see there, see, it actually, um, for whatever reason, did not come with an on off switch. It would only uh, um, it would only power on when you had all the batteries plugged into it and when I went to go add the on off switch I made that uh, stupid mistake um, not remembering my soldering classes that I took when I worked at Liberty Electronics to um, wire it correctly I end up melting the battery housing so I had to go get a new one of those so if you do pick one up pick one of these up or anything like that do be sure that if you do add an on off switch that you uh, make sure that you solder it correctly and everything but it works it works just great um, it's your standard pong game it keeps track of the score play till 15 points if I'm not mistaken um, the only thing of course is that I would probably be a well well you got your you got your two two player mode and then the rest of them are one player modes um, just a increase in difficulty between two three and four um, but uh, but other than that yeah I mean I will be getting like a project enclosure and maybe building my own controllers for it because the, you have to basically huddle around and there you're you know, move the move the paddles up and down on the screen and everything like that. So I mean, it it does get a little cramped, um, but a great design. It's it's really fun to build. Um, whenever you are doing that, just uh, be sure to be safe if you do solder because uh, you don't want to do anything stupid like lay the soldering iron on the carpet. Um, just saying, anyway. I'm, you know. So anyway, I mean that's pong for you in a nutshell. There's really not much else that can be said about it. I can even recall it as one of the first CD-ROM based games that I ever bought for the computer. Um, being Pong, of course, I mean, I played computer games way before CD-ROM. I'll tell you that right now. Lots of, you know, those DOS games and everything. But uh, that's pretty much all the more there is to it, like I said. Um, it's great. It's great, like I said. Um, you know, you're playing for high score. It's a one-on-one one -on -one battle. I mean, that's, that's where it's at right now, right there. I mean... <laughs> The only more ridiculous thing that I could possibly think up is if you know you had like the the Xbox or the or the PlayStation Network or even the Wii if you had like an online multiplayer Pong thing going on. I mean that there's no way that would ever happen. Um, I don't see that happening. But uh, other than that, I mean that's pretty much all the more there is to it. Uh, not a whole lot else going on right now. But uh, be sure to tune in next time 
Uh, let's see here, we've discussed a lot of the classic consoles and everything like that, and some of the more obscure consoles as the past videos have shown, such as the Zavix port, the Odyssey 2, my Pong consoles, um, several other in the collection and everything like that. But um, I do believe that next time we are going to cover another console um, that you may not have heard of. It wasn't around for very long and certainly wasn't very popular with only having five games in its library you can kind of say that it was Mattel's chance to try to come back into the video game market since they had not made a console since the Intellivision. Can you guess what it is after those facts? If not, you'll just have to tune in next time and find out. This is Josh Beach signing off of Josh's vlog. Until next time, keep playing video games and enjoy.